Hello, welcome to The Health In Show, an affiliate program of Homeopathy World Community. You've come to the right place to tune in and participate with your comments and questions. Love is the greatest healer of all, but sometimes, in order to change our emotions, we must take action in other spheres of our lives. We speak with experts in alternative and complementary health fields and hope you will benefit in some small or great way. Remember, you are wherever your thoughts are. Make sure your thoughts are where you want to be. Hello. Am I live? Yep. We are live calling into the Health In Show, an affiliate program of Homeopathy World Community. Today is March 10th, 2014, and we always make do with whatever we have, depending upon life circumstances and whatever the day brings us. And today, especially, this is the second week in a row where we've had uh, surprises. The surprise was that just about a couple of hours before last week's show, Dr. Shawan called in with a medical emergency and wasn't able to show up. And last night, I also got a call from the guest who was supposed to be with me today. That was Jackie Rithit Sinat, who is the author of this book, Rhymes for Remedies. And she is unable to make it, but we're going to reschedule with her for sure so that she can be with us in the future. This is an awesome, awesome book, and it's all about the basics. It's it's set up in a way that's easy to remember the remedies, and with each one, remedy has a rhyme that goes with it, and you really learn a lot. Um, about the basics of homeopathy if you're a mom at home and you want to get your kids started. So this is a really good book for new moms or people who have been taking care of sick people or just being ready for any kind of emergency. And this is this is awesome. We're going to have her on in the future. In the meantime, I want to have a big uh, a, another guest. And so I have invited... Dr. Constantine Herring, who we I have had on before to fill in, and he's always ready and waiting in the sidelines to walk on stage and talk with us, especially because he is an awesome author and the father of homeopathy in America. So if we begin simply with the first uh, slide we have, and there are slides that you can see on Homeopathy World Community, I put them on the very front page of the the main page of Homeopathy World Community. You can download them there. And of course, we begin science. Homeopathy is a science-based medicine. And we're going to talk about the most common causes of disease. Dr. Constantine Herring said that homeopathy ought never to be guided by the name of a disease. And this is part of what comes from his book called The Homeopathic um, the Homeopathic Prescriber here. And he, he has an in homeopathic domestic physician. And basically this book was written for a home prescriber and it has literally everything in there how to um, relay the information that you have at home to a doctor via a letter. And one show that I could do would be all he tells us all the things that you need to relay. And it's like 100 questions. And that really would cover everything. And he says that even though you're going to study homeopathy with this book, you're going to become a homeopathic physician unless you actually go to medical school and study human anatomy and physiology and do dissections and all of the things that you would 
if you went to uh, a full-fledged four-year degree medical school. But you still can cover a lot of the basics and a lot of the little emergencies that come day to day in a, a regular household. So again, let's just go back to the homeopathic physician, and he says, the next slide, uh, oh, I wanted to let you know that a lot of the people tell us that, you know, you're going to be, you have to be just a, um, a quack or not very smart and not have very much brains or think for yourself or anything uh, if you are believing in neopathy. And as a re retort or a reply, we always look back and see who else was interested in homeopathy and relied upon it for whenever they got sick, either in an acute disease or really in a very, very deep way in a chronic illness or even nearing death. And so if you look back in history, you can see some famous people, Charles Darwin, David Beckham, Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Charles Menninger, who was the famous founder of the Menninger Clinic, Dizzy Gillespie, Mark Twain, Charles Dickens, W.B. Yeats, William Thackeray, Benjamin Disraeli, Pope Pius X, Louisa May Alcott, Susan B. <coughs> Anthony, William Lloyd Garrison, Daniel Webster, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, William Seward, the artist Jackson Paul, W.C. Fields, the actor, and the former presidents of America, James Garfield and William McKinley. And as a matter of fact, I do believe even President Clinton uh, relies on homeopathy. So we're looking at people who were well-educated, and had the option and tons of money that they could have chosen any kind of care, health care that they wished. And still, they relied on homeopathy. On the next slide, it says, no individual has done more good to the medical profession than Samuel Hahnemann. And Samuel Hahnemann was the founder and the person who put all of the aphorisms into the organon and did all of those years, a lifetime of study to understand the mechanisms of homeopathy, this form of energy medicine that was very, very gentle, rapid, and efficient. So Dr. Everett Koop, MD, the Surgeon General of the United States from 18, 1982 to 1989, which is not all that long ago, said, quote, I can't remember a time when I didn't want to be a doctor. The doctors I knew as a very young child must have helped to plant the desire in me when I was young as five or six. One homeopathic physician, Dr. Justin Gate Wright, was a great model. And so he actually also looked back in history and looked to Samuel Hahnemann as a provider of health care, somebody he would rely upon and believe in as homeopathy does work. Homeopathy does heal. Okay, and so now we're going to go back to our um, slides, number four, the domestic physician. This guide was written for the masses, quote, it is intended to be an advisor to many in cases of indisposition when one will, will not or cannot consult a physician. To persons living in the country, it will prove valuable when medical aid, especially at night, can be had, but with much trouble, expense, and delay. But with this guide at hand, relief may be obtained in many cases. So you can see that during his day and even today, people do not have easy access to medical care. If you're out hiking, if you've had an accident, all different reasons. If you're, you don't have a lot of money and can't afford to go to the physician, there are a lot of reasons for people in all parts 
parts of the world that cannot reach out and get to a physician. And in those cases, um, having studied homeopathy, having a book such as this available to you, having an emergency kit, and I didn't bring one to show you, but having your little emergency kit uh, with your set of remedies and learning how to use them is going to be vital for your well-being, the people in your family, and feeling pretty secure that you will get over whatever it is. And that's it, it really gives you some self-assurance and, and belief in yourself, in your body and mind that you will return to health at some point. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and check. I wanted to welcome all of you folks out there, Kathy, Michelle, Dr. Bob, and Amnon, especially Amnon for putting on the production today of, of the programming. And here we have the picture of Constant, Dr. Constantine Herring, who lived from 1800 to 1880. And there is the copy on the next slide of the cover of the homeopathic domestic physician. It's a very, very lengthy book, very detailed. <coughs> and um, the most common causes of disease, chapter one, for some reason. Um, interesting. Um, so here we have all of this important, I wanted to remind folks that this is kind of coming in the middle, that a couple of weeks ago, I spoke at length about wound healing, which also was written by Dr. Constantine Herring, and gave us a selection of something like 23 remedies to rely upon. And then last week, I spoke about the placebo effect. And all of this information today is going to follow pretty well on the heels of that. If you want to go back and listen, there are on the Health In Show from previous weeks or on Log Talk Radio. As I guess, disorders arise from our spirit and from our imbalanced emotions. Every day, if you read the medical literature, we learn how emotions play a role in our peace of mind, on the affections of the heart, on high blood pressure, on instability with relationships, whether we are at work or at play. If something is bothering you within your spiritual realm and that is delivered to your emotional realm, making you emotionally upset, we're going to see that it's going to be the cause of a great deal of trouble with the physical body. And a lot of people would say that is somatization. So I want to thank again Dr. Constantine Herring as the father of American homeopathy. He influenced so many great physicians back in the 1800s, but through his writings, his legacy can feel the impact of his life's work today. Okay. Um, I also want to make a note that on the potency selection, he says that a physician has to take into consideration the age of the patient, his constitution, his general disposition, and his the peculiarities in the case, which means that really... He does not give too many specifics about potency selection, that that's a lot to do with the art and science of homeopathy. Okay, now we're going to get on with chapter one, the affections of the mind and sudden emotions. And what I want to do out there, folks, is if you would like to call in, there is a number, nine. 1951897739 or to computers 2k voice and if dr bob is out there and he wants to do a, a call in via the skype to our producer amnon and let me know if there's anybody talking there um to add comments on the the, the chat i would love for him to be part of the show um michelle i also want to thank you she writes herring lived long for that era 
80 years old. Yes. Okay, thanks, Dr. Bob. I appreciate that so much. Now we're up to slide number seven. He's beginning with the emotion of surprise and pleasure. And surprise to you that even with something good happening in your life, you might have some physical disorder, a physical disruption to normalcy. He says, quote, after an agreeable surprise, if the pleasurable sensations are accompanied by great excitement, trembling, fainting, etc., which may happen to women and children, give coffee, <laughs> particularly if they cry, weep, or laugh. And so there you go. If you think about um winning you know winning the lottery doing something really of an exciting nature then that can also bring a lot of flow from your heart to your brain and there's a connection there too and so a little bit of demonstration of that excitement would show when it gets a little bit out of balance with this trembling and fainting. And he says that it might necessarily happen more to women or children um, because of their sensitive natures that they could get out of balance in this way. And coffee would be the remedy. And that's basically what we're going to be doing. He's going to go for you to remedy and give you clues like your Sherlock Holmes until you understand what remedies would fall into what category slide number nine after a common fright caused by a sudden noise give opium if it can be given immediately but if a half hour or an hour should have elapsed aconite is preferable after a fright with great terror opium is the best remedy so you might say this is kind of strange we were looking at opium as a remedy of choice and perhaps in his day it was read available to the general public that, that they might have this remedy but you think also that it is a homeopathic preparation that there's none of the crude drug of oh, there it's not going to have the same effects of putting you into a stupor um, get, getting you to be in a state of stasis and non-movement which goes throughout the body from feeling painless or having constipation or having your bowels back up anything like that which would normally happen with um, the induction of opium into your system but homeopathically it can actually ease so many of these things. And we did learn in previous sessions that opium for snoring was a common for it. But he says here, he teaches us that the person who has this startle, totally being frightened, aconite, if it's not given immediately, or if there's there's great terror, use the opium. So he kind of differentiates and tells you which remedies might be better or worse. If, it, if anybody has a question, put it into the comment, into the chat session, or give us a call. The next slide, number 10, fright with vexation. So here, if you're feeling vexed, you're looking at the remedy aconite, which is for, again, you think of a person having um, an accident of some kind or something at the very beginning of an illness that it comes on suddenly, you're thinking of aconite. And if followed by sadness or grief, you're looking at the epitome of homeopathic remedies, Ignatia. If children, after being frightened, are still fearful, have great heat in the head and twitching around the mouth. Here he relies back on opium. So on this little slide, you can see that if you were a true student of homeopathy, 
you might say, well, let's look closely at the materia medica, the encyclopedia that documents all the proving and clinical poisonings of drugs and the effects. And you might pair up these three and see how closely are aconite, ignatia, and opium related. Does one follow another one or precede another one better? Does one complement the other one? If you use one remedy and not all of the symptoms are cleared, would one of them be good to finish up a case? I hope everybody understands what I was talking about, how they could complement each other. The next rem- next thing is opium, uh, uh, still here, and I put it up here, opium versus zohydro. And I, I put that because in the previous session on placebo, I mentioned this drug, and just go to all of the newspapers, there's a lot of controversy about fast-tracking drugs to market without complete clinical trials, and what the questions are by physicians, by pharmacists, and by people who are taking these drugs. Zohydro is an opioid to manage debilitating pain. But here, Dr. Constantine Herring says, if the fright is followed by pains, in the forehead, sour vomiting or eructation, like burping, weakness and cold perspiration or stupor with internal heat, agitation and heaviness in the abdomen or coldness of the body with trembling and nervous twitching, oppression of the chest, stiffness of the limbs, unnatural sleep with loud snoring, Give opium and water every 15 to 20 minutes, a teaspoonful, if better, less often. And I know I'm missing a whole bunch of um, punctuation in that, but I think you get the idea that opium is a drug for fright, with fright that has caused the body to get out of order when there is weakness and coldness and stupor and heaviness, and the reason that we can easily compare Ignatia with opium is because of all this nervous twitching, and because it's after a fright, so the causation would be a reason that you would compare them. Also, there's this loud snoring. Now, here's one of the infrequent times he tells us how to take it and when to take it, He does prefer a water dose and to be able to take a remedy and repeat it every 15 to 20 minutes when you're in such a state that you need to revive the person. And so take it in a water dose every 15 minutes. And remember, if you're feeling or seeing that the person is improving, you don't have to take it quite so quickly. The next one is, should within an hour the difficult breathing be the same, particularly after vomiting or coughing, as if the patient would suffocate, the face turns bluish and children weep much and grasp grown persons with their hands, they tremble as if in distress, breathing more like whistling instead of snoring, then the remedy is Sambucus. And Sambucus, the elderberry, is a remedy that is well known and well proven in today's pharmacopoeia, especially in Israel. They have done numerous studies that tell us Sambucus is for problems with the lungs, influenza, coughs and colds, and specifically asthma. Let me see what you have going on here in the chat. Kathy, you wanted to know Herring's book. It's called, it was at the very beginning, The Homeopathic Physician. Okay. The Homeopathic Physician. And you will be able to find this book, uh, The Homeopathic Physician. 
pardon me, and you will be able to find this book online. So you don't even have to make a, um, a payment to get to it. So we are now up to, oh, if there's any questions about this speed of action and differentiation slide. So here's something else that you want to take a note of. He's saying, you don't wait a whole day with a one remedy. You need to take action and assess the situation. If a person is not breathing, they need to get to a physician or you need to change the remedy if the one that you selected is not working. You really have to be on top of it. Uh, what concentration did he say? Dr. Bob, I believe that most of the remedies he talks about are low potency. They're 6C or 30C or 12C. They're, they're not high potency remedies that he's using. Okay, that answers that question. Um, slide number 13. If the difficult breathing increases to suffocation, Violent pains appear, especially in the pit of the stomach, he says, to give aconite. And these are all the words of Dr. Constantine Herring. They're not my words. And um, it's, this is an educational experience today. This is not that I am giving directions for diagnosis and prescription of remedies, but it is Dr. Herring who is our guest today. So he's saying here we're looking at a person, suffocation means that they could be um, going to pass away if they're not cared for. But now we're looking at something of violent pains in the stomach. And he says aconite. And everybody knows aconite is a remedy for fear, great fear that comes on quickly from a strong wind or a cold uh, initiated by cold wind or something. So here he says, if the fight is followed by twitching of the limbs or convulsions, insensibility, difficult breathing, involuntary evacuations, give opium. So if this should have no effect within a half an hour, he says, ignatia or glonine. Now we have on this little slide here, a set of four remedies that you could do a differentiation with and compare. These are obviously quick acting remedies, ones for fright, ones for violent pain, and ones for twitching, which means little spasms, and involuntary evacuations. That's going to the bathroom with your bowels. Um, because you have no control over your muscles. Here we have those four. I hope you understand what's going on. Yeah, glonine is nitroglycerin. It is a heart remedy, and it is one for um, tremendous headaches and flushing of, of the face, and it's a wonderful uh, heart reviver, obviously. The next remedy, or the next slide, um, slide number 14, if their sight fails, if they sink down, become pale as death, or alternately pale and red, have sometimes twitchings around the mouth, jerking of the limbs, or spreading asunder of the fingers, give glonine. If the back becomes stiff, ignatia. So here you're going to see that there is a relationship that overlapping them between glonine, nitroglycerin, and Ignatia, which has the um, component of strychnine in it. And all of our homeopathic remedies, a good deal of them, are toxins in the crude form. But with, when they're potentized, they're very, very gentle and rapid acting and help with severe conditions. Slide 15. When children have fright into fits and scream, tremble, have twitches in the arms and legs, if the head is hot with much perspiration and redness of the face, give opium. If no better in half an hour, then belladonna. I forgot to highlight that one in red. But if they become very pale, then you're looking at Ignatia. So here's three remedies 
to compare opium, belladonna, and Ignatia. And if your child has ever gone into a rage, uh, a fit, had a tantrum, and they're twitching and screaming and you can't get them out of it, take a look at if they're hot, maybe they have a fever, maybe they have an illness. If the face is red, opium. And if that's not working, belladonna. And then if they're pale, Ignatia. The next slide, if very cold with involuntary evacuations, Veratrum album. And remember the other one that was, so now you'd have to do a differentiation between the other one that said involuntary evacuations. In cases of simple vomiting, sickness of the stomach, or pains caused by fright, aconite. So it seems to me what we've been learning today is if you're having stomach pains caused by fright, then aconite's probably the first thing that I choose for myself. Slide 17. For diarrhea cause sudden mental emotion, give opium. And if the patient is excited, aconite. Sudden mental emotion. If this proves ineffectual, veratrum album or pulsatilla, according to the symptoms under diarrhea in the section of part two of this book. So we can see the repetition constantly and the well use and knowledge of the remedy opium, aconite, and now we're looking at veratrum album, which is one for a lot of um, vomiting and paleness and weakness, and pulsatilla. Oh, so you can compare and contrast veratrum album typically is very, very cold nature. They're very pale. Whereas Pulsatilla is a warm-natured individual with a lot of rosy flushing who would want the window open, who would want some coolness coming into the room. Slide number 18, for fainting out of fright, opium. If the patient becomes cold, sprinkle his face and bathe his feet with cold water. If it returns, let him smell camphor spirit at short intervals. So maybe you're going to keep in your medicine cabinet camphorated oil, which is going to be a reviver, but you also remember that camphor homeopathically will very often antidote your homeopathic remedies. And sometimes an antidote, so it's good to have one. I have a little bottle of it in a glass jar, so it will not any of the odor and fumes will not disperse and destroy the effect of all of my homeopathic remedies. Um, okay, so Michelle, and that's for the heart. People used to carry it around via wooden wagons to blow up mountains. Oh, I think you're talking about the nitroglycerin. Okay. Slide number 19. When, after a fright, there is a rush of blood to the head, give first opium. If this fails, aconite. And if it returns within six or eight hours, belladonna. So we're seeing the way that he is thinking. And the more you read and reread these, you kind of get an idea and gets into your own uh, natural, immediate response. As if you're practicing an instrument that you learn some of these key notes from Dr. Herring and understand if there's fright, you're thinking right away in your mind opium and you're going to determine which of the symptoms are going to relate to the opium, to the aconite or belladonna. Agitation. When after a fright, a person continues to be greatly agitated, he says belladonna will afford relief sometimes, sometimes mercurious according to the symptoms to be given hereafter. So later in the book, he explains what the symptoms of belladonna and mercurius are, how they could be confused if you're a, a new practitioner, if you're a mom, because there's heat, there's fever, um, but belladonna has a dry fever, whereas mercurius has a lot of perspiration. And so once you learn those things, you'll know which one is the best to select. But he's telling you after fright 
and there's agitation, um, kind of agitation you'd say might be restlessness, belladonna, and mercurius. Slide 21. When after a fright of a person continues to be greatly agitated, I think this might be a double. I repeated that. If fright or mortification produces derangement of mind, belladonna is to be given if the blood rushes to the head, the pupils of the eyes are large, the face is red, there's burning hotness, heat, nose is dry, the throat and neck are sore to the touch. And so you know um, things like um, meningitis, you might see these kinds of symptoms when there's these flushing and um, belladonna, it means beautiful woman. And when you, somebody's in love, their pupils are open wide. And that's what happens in a situation where the person needs belladonna as a homeopathic remedy from the Solanaceae family. Um, slide 22. I don't see any um, comments. Dr. Bob says, it's interesting, he always says, if this one does not work, use another one. Yes, absolutely. And I, I'm glad you picked up on that. Because, you know, unless you really, he knows, he knows what to look for. And he knows his remedies backward and forward. But he's saying he doesn't know what are the symptoms that the patient is displaying. You really have to understand the totality and the picture and the keynotes. And when somebody's in a really um, extreme state, those things come out pretty clearly. You can jot them down and write the observations very, very clearly because they're displayed in most extreme situation. Um, yes, and if something doesn't work, try something else. And he doesn't wait too long either, does he? If the patient can bear anything about the neck, cannot sleep at all, is raving mad, will run away or fears what he imagines to see before his eyes, if the throat and neck are very sensible to the slightest touch, if the patient talks incessantly, changing the subject often, here he says, give lachesis. And Dr. Herring was the one who did go to South America and actually do approving of the uh, Sirukuku snake, this remedy, the Bushmaster snake. And he knew because he experienced the proving of all of them himself and understood what to expect and what to see. Dr. Bob has written that in the comment that fright will usually constrict the pupils. And you might think that's true. When you're in fright, everything shuts up and clams up and you kind of tighten up. But with Belladonna, the eyes of the pupils do open. Slide number 23. If the patient is very indifferent or low spirited, alternating with paroxysms of laughter, or if he displays much pride and contempt for others, or fears the approach of death, or when with females, it is accompanied with a copious menstrual discharge, give platinum. Should this discharge, however, be diminished or suppressed, give pulsatilla. So at first, the previous slide, he said, when you cannot bear anything around the neck, and that's because um, the snake is captured by being caught around the neck. And here, it, there's a lot of um, free-flowing talking. The person just doesn't stop talking. And and slightest touch is going to bother them. Changing the subject often, you're going to think of that lachesa snake. But if the patient now is indifferent and low-spirited, obviously not talking very much, alternating with laughter. So here you've kind of, kind of these, um, something that, doesn't seem to make any sense. Why is the person both depressed and laughing at the same time? And now you're looking at somebody who has a lot of pride, looking down upon people and contempt for others, but they still have a lot of fear of approaching death. He also picks out um, 
women because we often think think of platinum as a woman's remedy, but you know, all of these women, these could be for male or female boys or girls. But he says when he sees this kind of behavior, when there is a menstruation going on, then he thinks about platinum. However, if a person is not having their usual discharges, then you're going to be thinking about pulsatilla, who has alternating symptoms, alternating disposition. Okay, any questions with that? Um, we have some chats going on about the snake and the viper. The viper, well, I think uh, Lachesis is a constrictor. Is that, or am I wrong on that? Somebody tell me. Slide number 24. If belladonna has given no relief and the patient remains much agitated, the least exertion bringing trembling and rushing of blood to the head, cannot sleep on account of frightful visions, is worse at night, cannot bear the heat of the bed, and wishes to escape or is quarrelsome or complains of his friends and of about all about him, give him Mercurius. So here he again is, this is the second time he has compared Belladonna and Mercurius, which are both might have an aggravation in the nighttime, at bedtime, where the, the Belladonna patient might have a spike in their fever. But remember, their fever is is one where skin is dry and they're not thirsty, but Mercurius is just coated with saliva coming out of their mouth or filling up and having to swallow with a coated tongue and lots of perspiration and sweatiness. Both of them are hot. Uh, remember that Belladonna has hallucinations, so frightful dreams, whereas the Mercurius uh, is quarrelsome about their friends. Belladonna also wants to, has an, a need to escape, to escape the situation that they're in. Slide number 25, fear is frequently combined with fright. Now, I thought that was quite unusual because I would put the words fear and fright together as the same thing. But what I kind of determined was I was thinking, well, maybe Fear is that comes from the inside, inside of you, that you have a um, display of fearfulness in a situation maybe when somebody else is not fearful. So it might be your personal perception of the situation and combined with fright, meaning that you might startle easily, that maybe there's something external to you that is causing a fright. So he says fear is frequently combined with fright and the same remedies may be used. When children are timid, aconite in the evening or belladonna in the morning. If children fear to be alone, arsenicum. If they are afraid of every stranger, pulsatilla. And there's another remedy that I forgot to highlight in red. And on the slide, you now have a um, introduction of two new remedies that you might compare against aconite and belladonna. So aconite, you know, is something that comes on strong. Um, it's person spikes a fever in the evening after the, the child had been surprised or frightened from something, also from a cold wind. Uh, belladonna is typical for somebody who has had some kind of a fright either externally in their environment, or they have this internal fright, internal fearfulness. Also, arsenicum is a very restless child. They have, are afraid to be alone, similar to belladonna, and they are not the same heat as belladonna, restlessness, clinging and want to be with their parent or change, go from parent to parent, whoever is there um, taking care of them at the time, they just can't still. If they are afraid of every stranger, 
then you're looking at a pulsatilla child who is usually comforted fairly easily um, when they're in a situation of fearfulness, whereas our Seneca may not so easily be comforted. The next slide, give these medicines only once and let several days pass without repeating or giving any other re a medicine. So isn't that very different in terms of repetition of the dose from what we've been reading so far? So you can see a difference that originally he was talking about opium and aconite and all of these very rapid acting remedies that would be needed and change it from this one to this one to this one every 15 minutes, every half an hour, every hour. Why? Because you're looking at a life and death situation. You're looking at somebody who's suffocating, somebody whose bowels aren't moving, somebody who's vomiting a lot, somebody who's spiking a fever and it might be going extremely high. You need to care for that um, constantly until the person is stabilized and therefore you might need to give a repetition usually in a water dose very often whereas when he's talking simply about fright that the person is restless but there's no life saving involved then it is possible he says let the re action of the remedy work its way through and see some improvement over the course of several days without repeating the remedy. And so you might hear your homeopath tell you that. Slide number 27. For diarrhea caused by fear, give Veratrum album, particularly when they are cold and trembling, when internally hot, externally cold, or the body hot and the limbs cold, pulsatilla. If the head is hot, opium. If the fear continues, if they imagine that they see dead persons or that thieves are in the house, concealed here or there, give arsenicum. So how would you know? What, what would you be looking for in these situations? Obviously, the child would be running to the bathroom and having diarrhea. And very often, a when a, something's happening to a child like this, then they have some kind of internal fear. Wonder what's happening to them. And remember to always give fluids, liquids, if they can hold them down so that they don't um, dehydrate, which can bring them into a more serious state of being. Remembering again, Veratrum album is for that pale coldness um, and diarrhea or vomiting when internally hot and externally cold or the body's hot and the limbs cold pulsatilla and pulsatilla is going to be comforted and feeling you know you're going to see that flush um, distension on their body if the head is hot opium so different parts of the body can display different temperatures. And that's important to know what is the comfort level of that ind individual with the temperature in the room. Do they need a fan? Do they need a window open? Do they need a blanket on them? Are they covering up? Or is the places on their body that's uncovered? Are that, is that sweating? Is that hot? Is that cold? So those are special things that you would want to take a note of. Then it says, if they imagine they see dead persons. So Arsenicum album has um, a great fear of robbers. And that is why he, he says Arsenicum album for this. And so they might say to you, to the parent, is the door locked? And that would help you to understand and know um, that you're looking at potentially arsenicum album. But remember, there may be other remedies that have that. You're looking up in your repertory fear of robbers. The next slide, um, there is a set of remedies, usually a trio, hyoscyamus, belladonna, and stramonium, that really 
are very, very similar. They're in the same plant family, and they have an active ingredient, atropine. So these four go together, and you need to learn the differentiation of when one would be used over another. So he says, when other symptoms appear, particularly stupefaction, difficulty swallowing, convulsions, laughing when asleep, starting, that's like startling, constant apprehension or a desire to escape, he says hyacinthus. Don't forget, both Belladonna also has a desire to escape. But he's saying the fact that there's this laughter, and I think also Belladonna has the rubric of laughter, but laughter when asleep, constant apprehension. And you also think about hyacinthus as uncovering their body, not wanting to have clothes on, being extremely jealous. That would tip you off for hyoscyamus and also for um, feeling not well, getting into this kind of crazy state after um, losing, uh, feeling that the, the person they love doesn't love them. Okay, so um, now we've we've kind of gone through through fright and fear as a causation, a common causation. And now we're looking at grief and sorrow. And I like, um, if we're coming to the end of the show, you just let me know, because I know I've, I've prepared a lot of information to make sure that we fill the space today. Grief and sorrow. The consequences of grief and sorrow, if long continued, are worse than those of other affections. Without the proper moral remedy, medicines are useless. Whoever cannot find the former need not expect relief from the latter. The first sudden consequences are, however, in most cases, soon overcome by medicines. So, you know, grief and sorrow. Today, doctors want to give you medication when you've lost a loved one, when your parent has died, when you've lost a child and you know that is a really sick sick way to because humans are connected to other individuals we're communal beings and love is the greatest healer and love is important and if you lose a loved one you're going to you're going to go into a, a new state of withdrawal it's almost like you have have gone into a state of death with that loved one and so you're not going to be your same old jovial self and you wouldn't expect to be however what dr herring is speaking about here is long drawn out grief something that doesn't heal a wound that doesn't heal and for anyone and i've heard these stories people say that when my parents died, I just was depressed for th- three years, five years, ten years. When a partner, when a when a husband or wife, a spouse has died, the person is never the same. And in fact, the percentage of people who die after a spouse has passed on is extremely high because their souls are connected. So what he's saying is that unless you're able to work through your grief and your sorrow in a healing manner over an appropriate amount of time with the community helping you, then you're just not a healthy person. And that's, he says, when remedies, um, he says, without proper moral remedy, medicine are useless so you need to have your community help you return to your vital self so then he says you need with that support then you your homeopathic remedies can also help you so next slide for silent inward grief combined with mortification for suppressed vexation we cannot quiet that we cannot quiet For silent grief caused by misplaced affections or in consequence of losses, which we cannot forget, 
for something continually preying upon the mind give Ignatia, which in some cases may be repeated once or twice within a day or two. So, you know, we're talking here about lots of different kinds of losses. Let's say you've lost a friendship. Let's say you've lost a job. Let's say a child has lost their favorite doll. Um, or, or people have moved away. There's lots of reasons why Ignatia can come in. Thanks, Kathy, for your comments about Dr. Herring and sorrow and grief. And he says here, in these situations, severe situations, you can repeat the remedy. Sleepless, slide 31. For vomiting or pains in the stomach or headache and giddiness, give Ignatia. And if it fails, phosphoric acid. So I want you to, to let you know that the acid remedies in homeopathy have great depression. And so phosphoric acid is one where people are very, very uh, connected to each other and affected by um, different people and very sensitive. Sleeplessness after depressing events, sorrow, or losses of friends. When night after night passes without any sleep, one dose of sulfur will often give relief. And isn't it great that a basic polycrest like sulfur can help with sleeplessness during grief and depression? That's really one that I am going to put into my little notebook, something to remember, sulfur during sleeplessness. And so now you might want to do a comparative analysis of Ignatia, phosphoric acid, and sulfur and the different um, remedy types here, whereas phosphoric acid, again, is a very, very chilly. Sulfur is very, very hot. And Ignatia probably is um, both uh, alternating symptoms. Slide 32, when fits are caused by grief or mortification, give Ignatia first. If this does not relieve, okay, I forgot to red highlight here. Opium during the attack and after it, phosphoric acid. So here, here give, he's giving us a trio, Ignatia, opium, and phosphoric acid. The order in which they might work best, Ignatia, opium, and phosphoric acid. And if one doesn't relieve, then again, the order is, and you put that to memory, Ignatia, opium, phosphoric acid. Slide number 34. When grief is caused by disappointment in love, give Ignatia. And don't forget the hyacinthus. Particularly, he says, look for one cheek turns very often red. When the patient is very taciturn or has a slow fever, give phosphoric acid, especially if both cheeks are sometimes red. So here you're looking at the the countenance of the person, their facial complexion, the color, and you think about red, red being love, red being the blood, red being the heart, disappointment in love. So you're looking at both kind of depressed, kind of um, disappointed and aggrieved people feeling ignatia and phosphoric acid. And very often phosphoric acid, love, Loves drink juices and gets up in the middle of the night looking for cold juices and puts ice in the glass. Whereas Ignatia may not need to do that. They um, might just need to swallow. That makes them feel better. Slide number 35. If the disappointed lover is more mortified, indignant, then Staphys agria. If jealous, violent in motions, his emotions quarrelsome and delirious, give hyoscyamus, which may also be given if the lovers quarrel much. So that means that um, two people who are in love and they're quarreling a lot, maybe one of them is needing hyoscyamus. And if there's mortification, they just hold in their indignation. You're looking at staph 
Staphysagria. And, re and remember that Staphysagria was good in the wound healing class for cuts that they experienced in uh, surgical cuts, clean cuts into the abdomen. Slide number 36. If he talks much and disconnectedly changing the subject of his conversation abruptly, talks to every person about his being jealous or is peevish and malicious, and he feels worse when awakening in the morning or after eating. Now you're looking back at that surukuku, the lac lachesis or lachesis, the snake remedy. And so you see, remember that the person who is loquacious in the rubrics of the repertory, who really talks, 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 and you can't shut them up, they just keep talking whether you want to hear them or not. They change it back and forth, whether it makes any sense or not. They just, they don't even finish a sentence. They just start a one sentence and all of a sudden they're into a new sentence and a new idea. And they're really jealous people, peevish and malicious. Um, one of the keynotes about lachesis is they sleep into an aggravation. They are worse when first waking. And also now we learn that they are worse after eating. Slide number 37. Any comments so far? Nope. Okay. Slide number 37, you know, when um, you're into your emotions, when contempt of persons heretofore that you once esteemed or loved is shown in acts or words, sometimes with a temptation to kill, such persons, now he's so going back to that female remedy where you look down upon others, that's platinum, down in the... Um, minerals in the periodic table of elements right in the center is platinum and that person is a feels they're at a very high peak and above everybody else and everybody else looks small they uh used to love that person but all of a sudden they desire to kill them that's platinum Killing for platinum might be very profitable. Okay, slide number 38. After grief and loss of sleep, in consequence of watching at the sickbed of dear persons, if there's headache and nervousness, after all of that loss of sleep, then he says cocculus is the remedy. And we know that a person who is caretaking, an elderly person, or a sick child, days and days and weeks and months and even years, cocculus might be the remedy. If there is great exhaustion, the patient's scarcely able to speak, then we're looking at phosphoric acid. Remember that phosphoric acid is for great weakness, stability, and depression, especially after love, love lorn. If entire sleeplessness continuing for many nights, we learned that so for is a remedy and I'm glad that he's teaching us that because I, I don't usually think about sulfur for sleeplessness but now that I know about it I'm going to think of it more often slide number 39 when mortifications have produced a derangement of the intellect that, that means like you're going crazy belladonna hyoscyamus mercurius or platinum according to the symptoms stated above. And he reviewed previously all of those. And so now here's another set of four remedies to compare. Mortification, being totally embarrassed into such a fright that somebody said something so horrific about you that you're totally mortified. And so now you go into a place where you're not right in the head that you're either hallucinating or desire to escape or you're worse at night or your desire to kill someone. That's not right. You're not supposed to be having those thoughts. So here's four remedies to compare. Slide 40. When mortifications have produced a derangement of intellect, we just did that. And the delusions, if all things appear larger, hyoscyamus. If much smaller or very like 
playthings, platinum. So as if, you know, you think things are toys. You know how you go up in an airplane and, and the world, all of the, the cars and the trees and the houses look tiny? That might be the perspective of somebody who needs the platinum. But if you're like Alice in Wonderland and you take the little potion that makes everything larger, everything appear larger, then you might be looking at the hyoscyamus. And those would definitely be a state of fright. 41. If dark, black, or double, and that means that if you're they're seeing things that are dark, black, or double, Belladonna or Mercurius. And so I, I know that there's people who have double vision, or if their their sight is going bad and it looks things around them are dark. Belladonna and Mercurius obviously affect the optic nerve. If Mercurius does not improve anymore, let it be followed by one dose of sulfur. So sulfur seems to be that one remedy that balances things out and can get you back into understanding what the symptoms are being displayed. When caused by homesickness and the patient cannot sleep, is hot and flushed in the face, give hyoscyamus. So now problems with an inability to sleep, uh, lovelorn and homesickness we're looking at hyoscyamus. Um, okay, the next one, slide number 42 is a mistake. It's a, a repeat. So go to slide number 43. And if this should not give relief within a few days, the cheeks only being red and hot, feeling in the back of the throat capsicum. And so normally, whenever I think about homesickness, I always think about capsicum, the pepper plant. So if your child is sent away to camp or they're on a trip far away and they want to go home and they, they really miss their loved ones at home, I always think about capsicum. But now I will compare it to hyoscyamus in the uh, Solanaceae family as opposed to the capsaicium family of the pepper family. Slide 44. If followed by a short hacking cough every morning for half an hour, drosera. So drosera is kind of like a living plant um, that's typically used for when the seasons are changing from the end of summer to fall when the temperature changes from warm to cold at night, Drosera is a well thought of remedy. And if the patient is evidently wasting away, does not wish to speak, perspires much in the morning, is sleepy and dull and will not eat, says everything he eats lies heavily and oppressively in the stomach, we're looking back at phosphoric acid. So He's looking here at comparing short hacking cough. So phosphoric acid is one for the lungs, the respiration, the throat, but also drosera. And what does he say? Um, he, he says that you're going to try one depending on the symptoms that you're looking at, the total totality, the symptom picture. If one doesn't work, then you're going to try another. And if you're seeing that there's this wasting away, just like that depressed individual that's weak, um, you're looking at phosphorus as a potential remedy for the hacking cough. Slide number 45, when the patient is very weak, trembling, uneasy, agitated, particularly during the night, and is chilly and perspiring very much, then mercurius. And the number of times we've repeated this remedy, you're probably now going to set it into your memory that if there's a lot of perspiration. And interesting, I always thought um, feeling very hot with Mercurius, but chills, chills could also be an indication of Mercurius. If grief, fright, anxiety, or fear promote the monthly discharge, or increase or check it or bring on other symptoms with it, he goes back to 
platinum. So in a previous chapter, he's telling us these hundred questions. If you want to get the correct remedy and you take all of your observations and all of your notifications, we're, we're just about to the end. I think we have one more. more um, oh, yeah, we're, we're almost to the end here. We're going to finish up. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, we're going to come to the end here. That for a female, you need to take the symptoms of the menstruation. Okay. Um, the last one, 46, protracted grief, and the person is cross and fretful. You have staphysagria, protracted grief again, loss of flesh and wasting, 47 is phosphoric acid compared to mercurius. And so what we've done is we've covered just part of the common causes of all disease, which arises from emotions. He has further chapters about vexation, about anger, about sensitiveness and irritability. And we're just going to skip over the last set of slides. We're going to go all the way to slide number 58 that says Samuel Hahn's Organ of Medicine, aphorism number one. The physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to health, to cure as it is termed. Next week, if all goes well and we have um, nothing going on in the planetary alignments for everybody, for uh, the guests to drop out, we're going to have three people with us. We're going to have Dr. Carlos Lario, the director and researcher of Roberta Costa Institute in Petropolis, Rio de Janeiro. We're going to have Prof Professor Regina Rianelli and Dr. Nikhil Cambly study cases about epilepsy, seizure, and convulsions, and they take care of thousands of children and young adults. On the following Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, March 31st, we're going to be talking about flower essences with Lisa Bizzaglia. And slide number 60, we're going to have um, the resources. I want to gratefully thank Amnon. I want to gratefully thank Dr. Constantine Herring for his writings, the homeopathic physician, and for Kathy, Michelle, Dr. Bob, and anyone who was tuning in today. Um, you can always find us on Facebook, Homeopathy World Community. I'm on Twitter, uh, Debbie Brock. And on Wednesday at 6 p.m., Alan Phillips is on the Blog Talk Radio Show, Homeopathy World Community, and Freedomizer Radio. I'm on the last Wednesday. Wednesday at 6 a.m. of the month. And I think that we have just about finished the show. We've gone over time. I apologize for that. And so I wish everybody waves of awareness, lots and lots of love, good healing, learning, studying, and keep remembering homeopathy heals. Thanks to Amnon. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks to everyone. Okay, I hope everybody learned a whole lot today. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Help In with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, The Tanya Love Show, Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, and if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals that vidblasterguy.com, carolinaapparel.com, and deltaforce.net. <laughs>